The objective today is to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. Solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. Here is the first example. x squared plus 6x minus 40 equals 0. To solve this by completing the square, your first step is to move the minus 40 to the right side and change the sign. Step 2 is to divide the middle term, which is 6. The coefficient of the middle term, which is 6, divide it by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. And what you add to the left side, you add to the right side. Again, half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. You add the 9 to this side and add the 9 to that side. Simplify the right side. 40 plus 9 is 49. At this point, you should have a perfect square quadratic expression on the left-hand side because you have just created it by taking half of 6, which is 3, and squaring it to make 9 there and there. And we added it to the other side as well. Therefore, you should have x plus that 3, which was half of 6. The quantity squared of x plus 3 will be equal to 49. Off to the side, we will do x plus 3 quantity squared. This is what we came up with on the left-hand side. It's a perfect square. It's the same thing as saying this. And if we multiply these two together, we get x squared plus 3x plus 3x and then plus 9. If you add the middle terms together, it is 6x. x squared plus 6x plus 9. That's exactly what we had over here on this side, in this spot. That is a perfect square. Here is that thing written in a square form. Now, to solve for x, we have to find the square root of both sides. The square root of the quantity squared of x plus 3 is simply x plus 3. The square root of 49 is plus or minus 7. So now you have two equations to solve. You have x plus 3 equals 7 and x plus 3 equals negative 7. On the left hand side, x would equal 7 minus 3 which is 4. On the right hand side, x equals negative 7 minus 3 which is going to be a negative 10. So negative 10 or 4 is going to be the solution to this problem. Example number 2 for this one <coughs> The problem is x squared minus 5x minus 36 equals 0. Step 1 is to keep x squared minus 5x on the left and move the minus 36 to the right. Change the sign. Next, you need half of this negative 5. Half of negative 5 means you're dividing it by what number? Two. 2. So half of negative 5 would give you negative 5 over 2. Negative 5 over 2 on the scratch piece of paper. Half of negative 5 is negative 5 over 2. If I square that, I end up with a positive 25 over 4. You square the 5 and the 2. Double negative is positive. And you would put that 25 over 4 in this spot here. But what you do to one side, you must do to the other. 
and you add 25 over 4 onto the right side. You can't do anything yet with the left hand side until you have simplified the right hand side. 36 plus 25 over 4. We can do that over here. 36 plus 25 over 4. To get a common denominator of 4, I would have to multiply this and this by 4. 36 times 4 is going to be 144. And you have a denominator of 4 on the bottom. 25 over 4 stays the same. 144 plus 25 is 169 over 4. When you add fractions with like denominators, you do not add the denominators to get an 8 it stays 4. So we came up with 169 over 4 for the right hand side. 169 over 4. Now we can make the left hand side into a perfect square like we did on the last example. You need x, you need the sign that came before the middle term, minus, and you need half of the middle term. Half of the middle term here was what? 5 over 2. So 5 over 2, the quantity squared of x minus 5 over 2 equals 169 over 4. You must find the square root of both sides. So the square root of the quantity squared of 5 halves, or x minus 5 halves, and on the right hand side the square root of 169 over 4. The square root of the quantity squared of x minus 5 over 2 is just x minus 5 over 2. On the right hand side it's going to be plus or minus 13 over 2. You need the square root of the top, the square root of the bottom. Once you make it to this point you have two equations to solve. x minus 5 over 2 equals 13 over 2 and x minus 5 over 2 equals a negative 13 over 2. On the left hand side 13 over 2 plus 5 over 2 is 18 over 2 which simplifies to 9. On the right hand side negative 13 over 2 plus 5 over 2 is going to be a negative 8 over 2 which simplifies to negative 4. So your answers are negative 4 or 9. Here's another example, but we're doing this with the questions and the sticks. So the first thing we're going to do is write the problem, which is x squared plus 13x plus 42 equals zero. We're doing this with fractions. If you want to do it with decimals on your homework, that's fine, but when we go through the examples and practice, we're doing it with fractions. All right, what is the first thing I have to do, Bailey? Uh, you want to move the 42 to the right-hand right side. That is right. So that would give me x squared plus 13x equals a negative 42. What is the next thing I have to do? Woodrow's not here, so we'll leave her off to the side. Deems, what is the next thing I have to do? She's going to pass, and we'll go to Haskins. What's the next thing I have to do? Divide 13 by 2. That's right. We're going to divide 13 by 2. What is 13 divided by 2? How are we going to write it? Blevins D. Uh, yeah, you could do plus six and a half. How is, but then we have to do what to it? He's right. It would be six and a half. And what would we do to six and a half? Garrett. Montavon, what would, what would we do to the six and a half? Um, Not yet. Six and a half will change the question. Six and a half is the same thing as what improper fraction, Hammond? 
Six and a half is the is what as an improper fraction, Wilbur? Six and a half is what as an improper fraction, Boyd? Thirteen over two is right. Thirteen over two is the same thing as six and a half. We're going to stick with the improper fraction. What do we do to that 13 over 2 at this point, Spradlin? Uh, That's right. We're going to square 13 over 2. What is 13 over 2 squared, Deerfield? Um. What is 13 over 2 squared? Martin's not here, so we'll leave that off to the side. And Blevin C, what is 13 over 2 squared? 42 As an improper fraction. Like we did on the example. Is how much? Uh, close. Armstrong, what is it as an improper fraction? Yes, that is right, 169 over 4. So x squared plus 13x plus 169 over 4. What am I going to put on the right-hand side, blizzard? Negative 42 is right, plus? Yes, plus 169 over 4, that is right. What is my next step now? That goes to Courtney. What is my next step, Carver? Um, you got to do the right side. That's right. We have to simplify the right-hand side. So that's negative 42 plus 169 over 4. Negative 42 plus 169 over 4. What's my common denominator going to be on this? Bradley. Is how much? Can't hear you. One fourth. The common denominator would not be one fourth. What is the common denominator, Baldridge? Four. Four is right. Okay, so that means I'm going to have a four and a four. The right hand side does not change because it already had a denominator of four. What am I having to multiply the top and the bottom of that first fraction by to get to my new fraction, Perry? Four. Four is right. So what number am I going to put in that circle? And we have to start over. What number goes in the circle? Courtney. Negative 168. Negative 168, yes. So we'll put negative 168 in there. What is my next step now to adding these two fractions? Baldridge. You add negative 168 and 169 get 1. That's right. It would be 1 over what? 4. Yeah. That's it. So we can go back over here to this side and rewrite what we have. x squared plus 13x plus 169 over 4 equals 1 fourth. What is my next step for this? And it goes to Perry. What is the next step, Carver? What is the next step? What am I going to do next? X squared. Yeah, your X, X squared. Is there going to be a square in it? Um, no. No, it's going to be an X. I was going to say that you put those things up by your same parentheses. Parentheses, then what? Yeah, and then uh, plus, plus, plus 
Not plus 169 over 4. 13 over what? 13 over 2. Yeah, 13 over 2. Okay, he's right. And the next question is, what's missing from those parentheses, Deerfield? What's missing from the parentheses, Montavon? A square. A square, yes. All right. What goes on the right-hand side? Blevins C. Uh, not on the right hand side. What do I write on the right hand side now, Boyd? Um, the square, square root of 1 over 4. Not the square root of 1 over 4, not yet. Haskins, what do I write on the right hand side now? 1 fourth. 1 fourth is right, yes. Okay, so what do I do to both sides now, Armstrong? Find the square root. Find the square root, yes. So I have to write that. I need the square root of the quantity squared of 13 over 2 and the square root of 1 fourth. Alright, what is the square root of the quantity squared of x plus 13 over 2? Hammond. What is the square root of the quantity squared of x plus 13 over 2? Spradlin. That is right, x plus 13 over 2. All right, what is the square root of 1 over 4, Bailey? It's not 1. What's the square root of 1 over 4, Bradley? It's his what? It's not 1 over 16. Blevins, D, what's the square root of 1 over 4? Close. What is the square root of uh, 1 over 4, Deems? Square root of 1 over 4, Blizzard. Nope. Square root of 1 over 4, Garrett. 1 over 2 is close. What's the square root of 1 fourth, Wilburn? Alright, we're going to start back over. And the square root of 1 over 4, Perry. Nope. Square root of 1 over 4, Courtney. One. Not 1. Square root of 1 over 4, Montavon. Square root of 1 over 4, Blizzard. Close. Square root of 1 over 4, Blevins D. Plus minus a half. Yes. Plus or minus a half. Okay, what do I do next? What do I do next? And that goes to Armstrong. All right, what do I do next, Bradley? What do I do next, Deems? What do I do next, Garrett? That's right. X plus 13 over 2 equals 1 half. And X, equal, or X plus, I should say. It's too late to fix that. X plus 13 over 2 equals a negative half. Since this is plus or minus, you write the equation twice. Once with a positive, once with a negative half. All right. Now I'm going to go over here and solve this one first on the left-hand side. What is my first step in solving this left-hand side? That goes to Wilburn. What's my first step on the left-hand side? Haskins. Um, you do x equals one half plus thirteen halves. X equals one half plus. Minus 13 over 2. That is right. Okay. 1 half minus 13 halves. What is that? Bailey. Uh, not a negative 168. Uh, let's see. Carver. 1 half minus 13 over 2. Negative 6. 
1 half minus 13 over 2 would indeed be negative 6. First you would have negative 12 over 2, and then you would have x equals a negative 6. So he is right. On the right hand side, what's my first step, Hammond? That's right. Move the 13 over 2 to the right and make it minus 13 over 2. What is negative half minus 13 over 2? That goes to Boyd. Negative 7. First it would be negative 14 over 2, and then it would be a negative 7. How would I express my final answer to this problem? Can somebody read it off? Spradlin. Negative 7 or negative 6 is the right answer.